Welcome to the Interesting Podcast with Jedi Brian, episode number 24. This episode is Ryan Wells. Ryan Wells, yeah, I say it multiple times in this podcast and I'll say it again. He's my favorite cosplayer. He, I, I love literally everything he's done. And you can tell during this that I kind of fanboy a little bit. Um, his work is phenomenal. If you are not uh, following him already, you really, really need to be. It's so good. If you love movies even more so um if you're any sort of artist just the way that he does things is it's crazy it's great you would expect this from a movie department or people who like have done this for years and years and years but ryan does it all on his own just figuring it out it's amazing it's amazing it's amazing i can go all day but uh in this episode we talk about how he got into cosplay um he owns a delorean an actual a a delorean yes from back to the future that is crazy and probably the coolest thing ever uh we talk about how he chooses his costumes um cool celebrity encounters he gives some really really good tips um for people who want to build costumes as far as resources but also on how to step your game up and become a guest and and further your cosplay career if you will um we also get the full story about his hoodie if uh if anybody follows him you know about his hoodie and his hat and his shirt and it's like a a, a look and we get that story on here as well. Uh, it was just great. It was great talking to him. Um, yeah, it's just that was amazing. Such cool, such a cool dude. Uh, this was also the first podcast I ever recorded over Skype. So you'll notice that the sound quality is a little different. It's because of that we recorded it over the computer as opposed to all the previous episodes we did. Uh, I've recorded in person with my equipment. Um, but yeah, here is a uh, the interesting podcast episode number twenty four. With cosplayer, awesome person, artist thing, Ryan Wells. Roll the theme song. What's up, man? Um, what's going on? Not a whole lot. Not a whole lot. Can you hear me all right? Yeah. Hold on. Let me just... Where's the video thing? There's... There it is. Okay. Sweet. Yeah, here you're fine. What's up, man? It... Not much. Just making some tea. Awesome. Awesome. It's nice to finally Great. kind of meet you, sort of. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you got a podcast, huh? I do have a podcast for a, a little over a year now. Uh, and was it just geek shit yep literally it's i call it the interesting podcast it's uh right, it's, cool. it's a show where i talk to anybody who i find interesting it's like um have you ever listened to the nerdist with chris hardwick it's no it, it's like that i'm a bad geek yeah. i don't do anything <laughs> other than watch movies and make costumes really that's what more do you need what more do you need yeah <laughs> well you got the anime and video games and all that other stuff and podcasts and, good point good yeah. point i see where you're coming from <laughs> So is this live or? Uh, no, I, I I'm recording it. This is actually my first Skype call I've recorded. It took me like a month to figure out how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, but yeah, I'll take it and then I'll get the audio, edit the audio, and then just put it out as like a radio show. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, it's it's fun. It's very conversational. Yeah, let me know when that goes out. I'll, I'll pimp it out. Sweet. Yeah, it'll be fun. You're in you're in Oregon. Yeah, Portland, Oregon. I have never been there. <laughs> you're in uh, Florida, aren't you? I am Naples. It's um, how far is that from Tampa? Uh, about two hours, two and a half hours south. Okay, so you're closer to Orlando. Uh, no, farther. I'm actually. Uh, For, uh, so if you go, t- if you go, how south, close to Miami are you? I am directly across. Like oh, okay. Miami's on the east coast. I'm on the west coast. Nice. S- okay. Straight line. But, uh, so you weren't affected by the uh, the hurricane or anything? No, no, we we didn't even get rain. It was great. <laughs> nice. And the, on the news, everyone's like, "You're gonna die. You need to leave." It's like, <laughs> it's like I don't. Well, they were like that over here too, but they panic over everything. Right, right. Hurricanes, you yeah. never know. 
we had a storm this past weekend. I was out of town for it, but uh, the whole town shut down. Like they heard thunder for the first time and they freaked out. Like we <laughs> don't get that? thunder and lightning. It's like people in LA when it rains. What is this water? Yeah. <laughs> well, that's what it is here. And I was like, it always rains here. I don't know what they're freaking out about, but whatever. Right. They just need something. For sure. For sure. All right. Yes, sir. So. You're actually also one of the first people that I don't personally know. So it's like a first real guest. So thanks for coming. So <laughs> these questions, will, the answers will come as a surprise to you. Yes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I, I pulled some questions from some of my followers and everything because you're actually my favorite cosplayer. Spo Aww. Spoiler alert. Hey, can you hear me all right or should I get a, a little mic thing like that? Uh, it's up to you. I can hear you fine if you don't feel okay. like wearing them. You're gold. No, okay. Um, All right, cool. Yeah, yeah. So I'm I'm a huge fan of your work. Thank Probably you. Probably because, like you, I'm more into movies than anything else. Yeah. That's where my I'm big thing is. I'm a bad geek when it comes to that. Right? <laughs> <laughs> that I'm a bad geek. I, I, I mean, I know video games now that I've been doing it so long. Sure. Uh, that I can tell you who Commander Shepard is and stuff like that, but I don't play him. I'm uh, I, I've done one video game character, and I made my friend play the video game so I can watch it, <laughs> just get reference and stuff like that, and that's as close as I got. There's the uh, a new video game. I, I bought a video game system. Hey, I bought a Wii. There you go. <laughs> um, but only because they came out with the Back to the Future game, and I wanted to right, play it. And right, I bought it, and it's been collecting dust <laughs> since. Um, I have not played it. I think I got past, like, the first half hour of it and got bored that's funny. and then i keep trying to tell my friends to come over and play it but nobody ever wants to so i'm i'm the, I'm the exact same way i get bored really easily with video games it just doesn't well, you're, keep me i met you through one of your video game characters isn't the lettuce guy a video game character he's a he's an anime character oh okay Which well is, there's the other one that right? i do <laughs> it's <laughs> it's kind of well it's kind of like an anime it's american like it was a nickelodeon show it was from was uh, it? avatar the last airbender Oh, okay. Yeah, it's from there. I saw the movie. It was horrible. Oh, God, that movie's <laughs> oh, offensively bad. I've worked with, uh, I've worked with, uh, what's his name, Prince Zuko? Oh, uh, D Dante Basco. Yeah. Yeah? I've worked with him at a couple cons. Dude. But uh, I just refer to him as Rufio. I don't know the yes, other shit. Rufio. Dude, hook <laughs> And he's a big Homestuck fan, too, so there's another thing I don't, <laughs> don't follow. You're like, I, I know this thing that you've done, and I like it a lot. Yeah. I don't know what you're talking about. How, what you're is... a one-hit wonder to me, yeah. man. <laughs> what is he like? No, I, I have watched that uh, Hawaii Five O show that he was on for a while. So. Oh, right, right, right. right. What, uh, what is he like in person? I've always wanted to meet him, because Rufio. Um, he, well, the first time I worked with him it was at a convention uh, here in town, mm -hmm. and uh, he was really quiet and nice and accommodating uh kept to himself um the second time i met him uh we were at emerald city what it was okay. i think it was emerald city, emerald city which is in seattle um and he was hosting a party at the hard rock cafe and uh he was plastered and had girls <laughs> hanging on all over him um and was ADD all over the place and, and and probably drunk to combine with that so sure. uh, we didn't talk too much we we said hello I was like hey I remembered you and and took a picture and that was that um, <laughs> but uh, he, he definitely was uh, in the limelight and loving it uh, sure. as anybody should yeah of but, course Rufio uh, Rufio but when he's not drunk he's pretty quiet oh that's awesome that's awesome yeah I want to meet him real bad one day because Hook is one of my favorite movies of all time like ever nice Hook is so good. Um, but yeah, so I've got a bunch of, uh, cosplay questions that you've probably heard a bazillion times. <laughs> that means I got better answers for them yeah. each time. <laughs> I'm the same way. I'm so bad. It's perfect. <laughs> right? Uh, first off, when were you first introduced to cosplay? Okay. So the story goes. Yes. The beginning. A long, long time ago. <laughs> yes. Um, a little over three years ago, actually. Um, I mean, introduced to cosplay in, in the purest form mm -hmm. is Halloween, basically. And I've always loved Halloween. Uh, I've worked in haunted houses, and I, I did theater in high school and stuff like that. So I've always been around set and stage, uh, lights, uh, props, and costuming. Um, but I've never really been one for costuming myself other than the occasional Halloween costume. 
Um, but what got me into it is I love movies. And one of the movies I adored growing up and, and pretty much was obsessed with was Back to the Future. And uh, wow. I had collected all the cars and toys and magazines and tapes and books and anything that had to do with DeLorean or Back to the Future, I had it filled onto a shelf. And um, one day about three years ago, I was homesick from work and looking at this shelf and saying, you know, if I had spent half the time collecting uh, parts for the car, I'd have the car versus having this big shelf full of crap. Sure. Uh, and so I put it up on Craigslist and in 45 minutes it was gone. And I started from there building all the pieces um, and researching the car more in depth than what I had done. I mean, I'd memorize the script and everything and I could watch the movies with the sound off. Sure. Um, but, and, and for purely for the fascination of the car itself, uh, but never went into like, what exactly are these parts? And I started doing research and finding online uh, communities and uh, tutorials and stuff like that of other builders. Um, so about a year and a half it took to build all the pieces that went onto a car. I didn't have the DeLorean at that time. Sure. Um, but uh, I had heard that Christopher Lloyd, uh, the actor who plays Doc mm -hmm. in the movie, was coming to a Comic-Con uh, up in Seattle, which is about three hours from me. And so I took one of the pieces of the car with me to get him to sign. And I had never been to a Comic-Con, never had an interest in comics or anime or video games. Um, but I, I loved Christopher Lloyd and I loved Back to the Future. And so I was going to go. And I had heard through the grapevine that if you go to one of these Comic-Cons that – uh, to fit in, you are supposed to be dressed up like all the other nerds. Sure. Um, and so I did what any other white fat guy would do, and I put on a hat and a coat and went as, as a silent Bob. <laughs> and uh, I had a blast. And then I met Chris, and I, I went through that whole thing. But aside from that, uh, I was introduced to this whole community that I had missed my whole life. Um, and uh, for that one day, um, I was that character for all purpose and tense of everybody wanting to take pictures with that character because they had a love for the, the fandom, uh, for all of his other movies. They wanted to talk to me uh, as Kevin Smith and, and say, hey, you want to smoke up or, or whatever yeah. <laughs> it might be. But, like, I was that character that I, I mean, I wasn't obsessed with the character, but I thought he was funny and, sure. and I liked the movies and stuff like that. And so from that point, I decided, hey, there might be something to this. And um, I wanted to do a character that I truly do love. Um, and Tim Burton and Jim Henson and Del Toro, these are all my, my inspirations. And so um, I was looking through all these characters. Uh, mind you, I, I didn't go to school for costume design or anything like that. It was purely what I can learn uh, on YouTube and be creative enough to figure it out on my own. Um, and I picked this one character from a Tim Burton movie. Uh, that I felt at that time was easy enough to pull off. And I did that one. Um, so I went to my next convention here in town. Uh, and uh, that was the kickoff point, And I haven't stopped since. And uh, I did that for about a good year. I uh, used all my vacation time and sick time and signed up for FMLA so I can get a little bit more time. And um, after about a year of, of doing everything that I could within driving distance, I needed to expand from there. Uh, and then I got my first paid gig um, by being a guest at a convention um, r right soon after. And so I decided to uh, leave my nine to five and, and do this full time. And I said, I'll do this for a year and get it off my uh, get off my chest. And I've always figured that my shelf life was so long. But uh, lucky enough, I, I just went over two years this past September um, and uh, I'm getting close to it still. And I keep saying that and I'm just like, <laughs> the first of the year is going to be when I go back to getting a 401k and and insurance and all that stuff like that. But uh, until then, uh, I've been playing dress up. I've been lucky enough to travel all over um, and, and guest conventions and do commissions for uh, big companies. been able to work with some of my heroes. Uh, in fact, this past convention that I was just at last weekend, um, I uh, was able to bring my finished DeLorean, um, which now travels with me to different conventions depending on what their needs sure. uh, and their budget. And uh, uh, I got to hang out with uh, George McFly himself. And, like, Dude. he was hanging out in my car. And he signed my car for me. And we were talking about stories. And, uh, like, like doing lines back and forth from the movie and stuff like oh. that. And, like, this is shit that I could have <laughs> never fathomed in my life that it would ever happen. Sure. And uh, here I am working with these. I, I've since then um, got to escort Christopher Lloyd 
uh, for opening ceremonies with Stan Lee and stuff like that in, in full cosplay uh, in San Jose for the Silicon Valley Comic Con. So that was like an, another full circle. Like three years ago, I was making a fool of myself with you signing a piece of my car. <laughs> and uh, and here I am escorting you on stage for opening ceremonies and stuff like that. And so it's it's been a wild wind. And on top of all that, just the community itself and then meeting all the friends and, and family that I now have within the community and, and my repertoire of, of costumes uh, with each one getting better at my craft. Um, again, starting from nothing than other than YouTube and, and, and the school of hard knocks. And, and now I'm a, a, an, uh, a uh, what do they call me? Some, some <laughs> artist, something or another oh, for the Stanford school for character design and, yeah, like, dude, it's it's crazy. That's but so. But yeah, that's cool. where it all started was the DeLorean. Wow, that is so cool. You have a yeah. DeLorean, like that. that yeah, that is such a big deal. <laughs> that is. <such laughs> that should have been the big deal, but there's been so much more since right. then. <laughs> right. I'm gonna start with let's see, a DeLorean. That's <laughs> you're yeah. already pretty up there. That's so cool. So yeah, I guess I am kind of a geek, but uh, I mean. You know, you're, I have geekier friends. Yes, you, you know what it is. You are. I, I would say you're. You've earned every bit of geek cred that you need just by your costume choices. Like, like I said, you're my favorite. There, there are hundreds of cosplayers out there, but there's no one that hits the notes that you do. And I'm. There's like, two criteria for choosing costumes. Yes. And that's first of all, I have to love it. Same. Um, same. I'm not going to put a penny or a dollar into some uh, a penny or a minute into a costume that I don't love. And it might be an emotional attachment that I had from a character growing up mm -hmm. or it might just be a, a funny meme that is just so hilarious that like it's just you have to do it just for the for pure laugh of it. Sure. I um, mean then the other thing criteria which to me uh, I think is a uh, tribute to the success that I've had mm -hmm. is that if I can find more than eight Google images of somebody else doing this costume, I scrap it. And and this is not just local. I meant like worldwide. If I type in Garthram cosplay, which is the last one that I finished, um, I think I found three other people that have done this. Sure. And I was like, okay, this is safe to do. Because I don't want to be the 800th Iron Man walking through a costume uh, contest or in a convention. Because no matter how well I've done it, people will be like, oh, that's really good Iron Man that I've seen 800 other times. Sure. Um, but if you can keep it too relevant and uh, obscure enough to be something that's so popular that the character is easily recognizable, mm -hmm. but not done so many times that it's still fresh. And, and there's that. And then also I, I tend to um, keep my costumes for a very short time. It's like wearing a, pop, a prom dress. Like you, you go to one convention in a state and you wear it that one time and then you wear it to a different convention in a different state. And then when you're asked back to that convention the following year or another convention within a couple miles of that one, if they're both in the same city, um, you try to do, do new stuff because the same people are coming to the same convention and they're going to like, oh, there's that, that person in that costume again. That's really cool. Oh, yeah, I saw that last year. Right. And it's not as relevant as, as something completely brand new. And that makes it fun for me as well as for the people that are coming to the cons to see these kind of things. And so sure. that's why I kind of stand out is because of those those two criteria that I on how I choose my cosplay. I think that has um, – been a lot of the success that I've had. I mean, I'm not one of those model cosplayers that everyone buys prints from. Um, <laughs> I'm with but you. they they enjoy my costumes for for those reasons. Absolutely. I we are the on the same wavelength with that because I'm the same way. If I've seen something done too much, I was like, I, I'm not going to do it. But the same thing, yeah. like the cabbage merchant. When I decided that I wanted to do him, uh, there were only two other people in the world I'd seen done it before, and none were anywhere near Florida. So I was like, I love this character and I want to see him represented. <laughs> So I'm going to do it. And and he was such a meme. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, he's Yeah. If you in the series, he's actually he doesn't even have a name. He's like a running joke that pops up three times <laughs> throughout the series at random parts. Like he's not even an actual character. And I had um and I'm sure you've had experiences like this before. Um I had the guy who voiced the cabbage merchant tweet me. And he's like, "Oh, that's really cool." So I mean, you escorted Doc Brown. <laughs> Pretty awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, I've been fortunate enough to, to meet some of the actors from the films that I've worked with. 
um, personally uh, talk to them uh, in person or online, um, as well as, uh, more importantly, some of the creators of these things, yeah. uh, the, the, the sculptors from the original 80s movies that were working on the designs for these, the people who, like Brian and Wendy Froud, uh, that had designed the characters from the Dark Crystal or the Labyrinth and, and was the main puppeteers on these projects. Uh, she sculpted Yoda. I mean, like, these kind of people that were huge influences to get to, get to meet them in person and say, you're the reason that I'm doing what I'm doing today and compare notes and, and and I got to work with their son Toby who was a little baby in Labyrinth and now has grown up to follow in their footsteps uh, at a convention in uh, Pasco Washington um, but yeah like these are the people that shaped my childhood and, and made me who I am whether I had pursued uh, costuming or not as a, as a hobby or and then or a uh, profession um, they still shaped my childhood and they were my idols growing up seeing these things and creating the creativity that I have inside of my head um, by by studying their work and learning from them. I remember as a kid watching The Dark Crystal for the first time um, and seeing the actors uh, in the behind the scene footage with little TV monitors that they were looking down in and uh, working and puppeting the characters. And that was my first insight to behind the scenes and Hollywood magic. And that stuck with me through the years um, and, and got me into set design and, and stuff in high school and, and working on plays uh, and then uh, doing haunted houses and stuff like that, always decorating my own house uh, or my parents' house growing up and stuff like that. Um, but when I got into costuming, um, the third costume that I had chose to do was that Skeksis that, uh, taking me back to the time of watching all those people puppeting and stuff like that right. and trying to figure out how to do that um, without... Jim Henson helping me or, or without Brian or Wendy uh, designing it. Uh, so uh, that definitely was uh, my my highest point uh, and also often what people ask what my favorite cosplay is um, right. has to have been that Skeksis is because that's what kind of started me as a childhood in this whole thing that I want to do that when I grow up. Sure. And uh, I might not be in the industry working for Hollywood or whatever and I'm only doing yes. it on a small level as costuming uh, yeah, uh, it's costuming, but uh, but being able to pay homage to to that point in my life uh, it has been a, a real highlight. And then some years down, uh, doing the Gartham again uh, from the same film, and actually being able to work with the Henson Company at San Diego Comic Con um, for the new release of the prequel book, um, working with the uh, vice president of children learning, uh, the illustrator and the author of the new Dark Crystals. Um, Shadows of the Dark Crystal book that just came out uh, for their book signing. I, I got to, to guard them and then kind of hang out with them for, for the panel and stuff like that. So like the Cheryl Henson, who's the daughter of Jim Henson, my all time hero was sitting here thanking me for for doing work for them. And I'm just like, uh, no, it's the opposite <laughs> way around. But OK, you're just so, internally yeah. crying. <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. I do that a lot. Ditto. Ditto. <laughs> yeah, I just had, I just had dinner with a. Uh, Mr. McFeely uh, from, uh, yeah, the speedy deliver man himself was uh, sitting at our table uh, for the VIP dinner at this last convention. And we had uh, Deep Roy, who was the Oompa Loompa, who, yeah. of course, I, I love him to death. And there was a couple other people. Um, but, yeah, like working with all these people that, like, I've idolized for so long and, and learned to change the word idolize to, to respect, to, like, sure. I, I'm not – putting these people on pedestals but they they shaped my childhood yeah so. it's kind of hard not to yeah, respect for yeah, sure exactly that's that is still so... have my fanboy moments <laughs> i live in a fanboy moment i'm having one right yeah. now <laughs> <laughs> that is so cool so cool um uh how did you go from cosplayer you know just every day making costumes like a lot of people to furthering that into working with your heroes into becoming a guest and stuff like that um, well, my, um, well, I just basically did what I do. Like sure. I make costumes that are easily recognizable. Uh, I fit a niche that not a lot of people fill uh, in the community. Um, and I have a local anime convention, uh, that I've attended, uh, and they, uh, want to, wanted to grow out, uh, mm -hmm. from just anime to pop culture and so on. Uh, and they thought that I'd be a good fit to help them with that. And so they were my first break, actually, and it was called NewCon uh, right. in Portland. And uh, they asked me to be a guest, and that was the first place that I ever was a guest at. 
Um, and it kind of gave me a taste of, hey, you mean I can go to these conventions and they'll pay me right. to do the stuff that I'm already paying them to do? Um, right. And he, I get hotel, like nothing is have to worry about other than making sure that you dress up in costume, right. which is what I do anyways. Uh, and then what I learned more importantly uh, by doing that is the panels. Like, yes. I'm not a geek, so I never went to panels. I had never been to a panel before. I, I went to the conventions. I hung out in costume. I hung out with my friends. I drank. I had fun. Sure. And that was that. Like, uh, I have no interest in what they're talking about. Um, and they um, had me put together a panel. Now, up to this point, I've always posted my online progress and stuff mm -hmm. of my uh, work as I'm going through it. Because um, I find it as as much as a, a, a help for other people to follow along and to learn from it, as in much as a, that as a motivator for myself, for people to chime in and say, hey, help, uh, uh, I've done this before, try this or whatever, or, oh, that's a really good idea. And it kind of helps motivate me and get me through my projects. Absolutely. Um, so I t found out that I can do that on a personal level at these panels where people who had never heard of me or, or heard of uh, at doing these types of advanced cosplays, as they call it, um, to learn from this and get inspired. Um, uh, I just, this convention last year uh, that I went to last week and the previous year that I, their first year, um, I had worn this Skeksis costume that I had talked about. Sure. Uh, and this girl went there and it was her very first convention. She'd never been to anything like this before um, and was probably just then introduced into cosplay and she saw my Skeksis and she didn't even know what Dark Crystal was. And, uh, her husband had said, oh, well, we're, we're going to need to watch this when we get home. And one year later, this past weekend, um, not only had she fallen in love with the fandom, uh, but she made a Landstrider uh, uh, cosplay, which ironically, I had my Garth in, and so we had to battle <laughs> it out. But it was because of my inspiration and, and saying, hey, you can do this, and let me show you various techniques on how you can apply and make these larger-than-life costumes uh, and learn about these fandoms that we come to the conventions to celebrate. Sure. Um, it was like full circle for her and one year later to, and that was a really cool moment. And I, I like those kind of things, uh, as well as the working with the people that inspire me is being the person that inspires other people, uh, and doing panels and stuff like that. Um, and then, uh, from that point, um, there was another convention in, uh, Tennessee that had said, uh, we want you to be a guest, but you can't be a guest unless you have a cosplay page. And I'm just like, no, no, just use my personal page. Like, I, I was against it. Uh, and they did that. And it, I'm just like, it's just going to be the same stuff that I post on my personal page as I post on my uh, cosplay page. And I, I soon, soon learned that uh, it does reach a whole new audience. Um, oh, yes. And I was able to expand from there. Um, and uh, it, it got as far as uh, just this past, uh, this past, this year, um, I was uh, chosen to represent the U.S. in a global uh, co cosplay competition in Switzerland. Mm -hmm. And it was purely because they had seen my work on my page and gotten as far as uh, Europe to where uh, there's like, we want this guy from the U.S. to represent the U.S. in this global competition. Uh, and I was lucky enough to, to have been chosen for that purely because I had a page. And so that's opened up um, all channels. Uh, going to these conventions uh, as well, um, getting outside of my little Portland, Seattle tuttle. I, I went to San Diego uh, two years ago uh, and made a lot of connections there that got me through cosplay cruises that I was hired on for, uh, as well as working for um, commissions for Logitech and Nike and, and all these big companies yeah. that aren't looking so much for costumes, but for prop work, which is kind of in the same wheelhouse. Mm -hmm. um, so... As a professional cosplayer, I have to say it's it's 40% costume and 60% uh, networking. It's like you go out there and you talk to everybody uh, while you're at these things. You carry contact cards. You go online. You join groups that have to do with what you're interested in and, and get to know people in there. Um, Tim Clark, who uh, has moved on to uh, make a lot of toys from our 80s, I was one of the original sculptors from the uh, Dark Crystal, and I, I've been able to to talk with him uh, and get get insights from him and stuff like that, as well as uh, different actors and stuff like that. And that's all through networking and and whatever. And so it's it kind of just have to make your own start. Sure. I mean, if it's something that you wish to do, you knock on every door. And, and, and when they don't answer, you try the doorknob. I mean, you just got to go for it. Sure, sure. That, that's great advice because I know a lot of people who do cosplay since – I mean, you know, Heroes of Cosplay was a thing that caught on, and then 
cosplay has become massive in the last like four or five years because people mm-hmm. have always dressed up at conventions i mean since the dawn of conventions there's been people dressed as superheroes but now yeah. it's like a thing you know that people yeah. do and here's a cosplay um which was done by Pittman casting um was done in an era where cosplay wasn't well known right and um and that seems silly because it was only like four years ago three four years ago yeah. that this thing but just in those three four years Cosplay has become such a thing that it's now more of a household name. So when that show was originally released, they're just like, ah, oh, we don't really know what to do with this, and we don't expect cosplayers to, to follow along with this, but we're just going to put this out for silly drama and that everybody can follow through. And they since learned their lesson that, like, this is a real <laughs> thing, and people really want to pay attention. And so they've since come out with Face Off that did really well yeah. or, or is doing really well. Uh, they also came out with the Jim Henson Creature Challenge, which yeah. was more based on... We've seen your heroes of cosplay crap. We want to see what these builders are doing behind the scenes and not just crying about things. Uh, and so <laughs> came out with that show, and it was a success. Uh, and now, behind the scenes right now, they're working on another show um, for a cosplay-related, kind of taking the face-off concept, but as for cosplayers, in a totally different direction than they did back then with heroes of cosplay. They learned your lesson, and now sure. they want to make something along the lines of face off where it's still a competition it's reality uh but they're doing costuming instead of makeup gotcha. and so that's what works right now that's awesome that is so cool like this very specific art form you know that people wouldn't necessarily think like costume building costume building is a thing that there's entire departments made out of movies yeah. and there are people like you that's like you're a department <laughs> like you've sculpted yeah. you've painted you've done all these things uh Growing up, did you were you an artist then? Did you paint? Did you do anything like that, or is this just uh, something that clicked? That's the level that I do now. No way, shape, or form could I imagine five years ago that I'd be able to make something that I've previously made already within the past couple of years, um, and that, and that even was. Uh, rang true when I first started. I mean, my first costume did really well just because of the emotional attachment and because it's not a very popular costume, and so it kind of stuck out. But if you look at the rudimentary of it, there wasn't a lot to it. Right. Uh, you compare that costume to one of the ones that I've done recently, there's miles apart as far as uh, experience and, and, and techniques and stuff like that. And that is a tribute to doing my homework going to panels now, learning about things, meeting other cosplayers, talking to them about their methods, um, joining these online forums where people are constantly posting their progress. And it ha- might not have nothing to do with what I'm doing, but I can take those techniques that they're doing and put them into what I'm doing, um, as well as what I try to do with every costume or cosplay that I'm building is I try to push myself out the box each and every time. So. Um, I might be comfortable with one certain method of doing something, Mm -hmm. but for the next time I make something, I'm going to try something different, and I'm going to keep pushing myself out. I've made projects purely just to make sure that I can prove to make a bigger project. Like I have an idea to, um, like my bug from Starship Troopers. Oh, my God. Um, I wanted to make that out of, uh, the well, what started off as, um, I had heard about this Warbler product. I never used it before, um, and I said, let me try it, and... I made a little backpack for a steampunk convention uh, that was based off of some Brian Kissinger uh, artwork. Mm -hmm. And with that, I learned how to use Warbler. And I said, and then with the trial of that, I was getting little air bubbles. And I was like, oh, well, if I had a costume that I can use these air bubbles to my advantage and and for texture and stuff like that and manipulate them. Uh, And so from that project this little backpack that I had learned how to use Warbler in, I then took all those things and took them into my big giant 12 foot bug. (laughs) And now I know how to work with Warbler and it was a huge step, but it was still basically the same elements of how to, where the heat levels are and what the air bubbles do and how to apply this and how to blend seams or whatever it might be. And I was able to apply that to my next costume. Um, And then I'll do a a Warbler project and then I'll go back to doing a latex project. And then I'll try to go back to doing a a sewing project. Um, And with each time I I push myself outside those boundaries. And so uh, I've gotten better over time just by purely being my own motivator as well as talking with other people and learning techniques and stuff like that. Uh, I've been lucky enough to, um, work with the companies like Tandy Leather and Cast for Art that that make these products uh, are able to uh, give me st- um, what's the word I'm looking for um, like sample packs <laughs> well or sponsorships 
sponsor. That's the yes. word I'm looking for. <laughs> They'd be able to sponsor costumes. Um, uh, Tandy, uh, Tandy Leather, who came out with Warbla's, uh better cousin, yeah, yeah. Um, compete, which was Terraflex. Uh, they asked me out to Dragon Con uh, this uh, past year um, to do a panel for them. And so because I did that, um, they had me under the radar. And when I started doing my Johan Krauss costume, uh, there's like, hey, I, I have a feeling that you're going to need some, some product for that. Why don't you go to the store and pick some stuff out? And uh, I was like, well, I, I could use this leather. And they sent me a $600 hide of leather Dude. just because uh, they want to sponsor and be part of the creative movement and and as well as thank me for doing their panel and stuff like that. So I've been able to not only work with other cosplayers and stuff like that, but people in the industry uh, as far as the materials. And like when uh, I did my bug, Cast for Art, who, who makes um, Warbla out in Germany, um, they had sent me a roll of their new uh, transparent Warbla right when it first came out. And they was like, hey, we have this video of Rafe. Uh, he's doing this thing on the skull. We want to see what you can do with it. And right at that time, the trailers for Mad Max were coming out. And I was like, well, this guy's got clear armor. I got a clear roll of crap in my hand. Let's do that. Uh, and I, I made that purely on a whim just because I had a product that I wanted to make. And a friend of mine who's in the press uh, went and got to see the movie a couple of weeks before it was re released. And I'm just like, like, you don't have to ruin the movie for me. Just make sure, tell me that he doesn't die in the first five minutes because <laughs> I would have wasted time making this costume. Turns out it was an awesome movie and the character was really cool. Uh, and so that was a success. Um, but, but getting all the... Um, Talking with Weta that uh, does the, the concept art and, and, and worked on it... Um, on the movie as well, talking with them and, and getting behind the scenes knowledge and, and reference photos and stuff like that to where um, I was able to produce that before the, before the release of the film. So that was a really cool project too. So it's like, again, it's networking and, and it's because I get my work out there on my page that, that people like Weta can say, Hell, we really like this. Can we use your, your, your work for New York city comic con? I was like, right. you guys made the, and movie what do you want my work for like right it's just stuff like that it's just really cool and it's because social media and, and online presence has become so much bigger just in the five years oh, yeah. that that's allowed the cosplay community to evolve so quickly where cosplay conventions that yeah they were around and people used to go and they dressed up for fun but now that we got these outlets like instagram and facebook and stuff like that and, right. and now people are doing photo shoots and getting their work out there and and, and making a global presence um and, and 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 collecting people that enjoy their work um or enjoy learning from them or whatever it might be um that's the reason that cosplay has gotten so big it's not because films or anime or video games uh, they have evolved um, but there will always be those type of fans. It's sure. just because that there's such a, an outlet for creativity within that community um, on a global level um, through the interwebs uh, is that it's become so popular. Sure. Yeah, I, I love the fact that, like you're saying, it's work. Like that if you want to make yeah. a name for yourself, you can, literally, but you have to make a name for yourself. You have to put yeah, in the work. Sometimes it's by accident. It. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's a testament to your art and how... Yeah. Just how talented you are in that you – dude, you made an Immortan Joe costume before the movie came out, and it looks yeah. like it's from the movie. Like I – one of my favorite things about what you do specifically is your progress photos. Like a lot of people don't do that. They don't show how they're making it. They're just like, oh, here's the new costume. And that could be for a couple reasons. Of course. Uh, and that can be because uh, – purely because they don't – make it first of all sure. somebody else is making it <laughs> sure um they also could be and, and mostly is because of competition um now i, I swore off competition for a, a period of time throughout my career sure. um and i'm now back in it but uh people who compete they they want to hold that element of surprise they want to uh. be able to get onto stage for the first time and then be judged uh awesome. and then purely the other reason and this is the thing that i find uh something that i struggle with is as a true artist you never like your own work. No matter what I've done, you point to a costume and I can tell you a million things wrong with it. Sure. Um, and I will never enjoy Like there's always be, some, always be something I could do better or different. Uh, and that might be uh, why a lot of people are doing that. I mean, let's face it, the cosplay community ha is, has a lot of people in it uh, that we don't include socially normal. Correct. Um, none of us <laughs> are the sharpest crayon in the box because we're creative. We, we don't, 
fit into those norms. Yes. Um, and so there's the insecurity that goes along with it. And, Absolutely. and uh, well, you've seen that a million times. Like people are just like, oh, you should write a book. And I'm just like, well, I can give you a, a list of 80 books that all, all go over the same thing. Right. And yeah, it might have my name on it, but you can get this. And, and people's like, well, how'd you do that? And I'm just like, you realize all this stuff is on the internet. Like you can <laughs> look these things up at and learn everything about it. And, and I'm lucky that people don't do their homework and people don't, have right. that reliability in themselves because I still get to do panels and stuff like that and go over the same information over and over. Right. Um, but yeah, it's it's. I think it, it, those kind of things are are one of those three things, and probably the fourth thing they just can't be bothered. I'm here just to have fun, to dress up, and, and to do the costume. Like I can't be bothered to put together tutorials. Like I have uh, the sure. RPF. Um, I just do it mobily. Like I just oh, do yeah. it as I go along phone and i had i have the the people high up art and and um all them and saying hey you should go online and put together tutorials i was like i can't sit along long enough to watch a tv show there's no way i'm gonna <laughs> put together a whole thing like that like you get the mobile app and, and that's good enough for me because i'm constantly busy because when i'm not at a convention i'm sitting right here working on something else sure um a lot lately uh has been uh private commissions where i'm under contract and can't talk about them right. um, so i've been a little bit quiet online um but i'm always working on something and when i'm not working on something i'm at a convention and that's my only social outlet is going to these conventions but it, as a profession it's gotten a lot worse to where uh, i need to keep the creativity going so i can stay relevant and stay going to these conventions so i'm cutting back on social just because I can go there to get the social and it's kind of like a catch 22. So it's sure. It's weird. It makes sense. It makes sense. I mean, you do so much. Like you said, you get commissions now, which is a big yeah. deal. And you get commissions for like Nike. And that was purely just because, uh, they had seen some of my work and, and some of my finishes up for, up close. Um, I'm not sure exactly, um, where I connected with the, the person that I'm in connection with. Um, but she had gotten a hold of me on my cosplay page and said, hey, I'd seen some of your work up close. Um, I have a small project. Would you like to take that on? And did that and did well. And she came back with more and more. Um, and so I've been able, lucky enough, to, to keep that revenue stream. Um, and working with other people, I've picked up a, a couple other commissions from some other big companies um, that have nothing to do with costuming. But the fact that they, they know my work and my, my detail to um, – to uh, the finishes and, and so on and so forth, um, being able to do these things uh, as a customer or as a cosplayer has has opened up doors for other things, and that's kind of where I'm at right now. Like um, as a cosplayer, I can continue this lifestyle and I can continue making what I make to get by and whatever. Um, but if you truly want to make it doing this, you need to get into the industry. You need to work for the big companies and stuff like that. Sure. Um, and. Uh, I, I do some charities works, which uh, has put me in contact with the Stan Winston studio. So mm -hmm. uh, I've had that connection as well. Um, so, I mean, there's a lot out there that you can do as a professional co uh, cosplayer. Um, I think the ones that are making it purely based on their costumes and stuff, again, are those models yeah, that, for sure. that get paid for that. I mean, I've done calendars, but nothing like those guys. Right. Um, I've been published in books and stuff like that, but people aren't buying my 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 pictures for that aspect. Yeah, um, for sure. So, and and that's not something I care about because I'm not that person, and there's nothing wrong with that. Like you you say cosplayers are either this or this or whatever, but they're all cosplay. Just like if you look at dance, you have, you have people that do ballet, and then you have people that do hip hop on the street. It's still all yeah, dance, exactly. You know? So absolutely, yeah. I, I learned that lesson the hard way about the print sales. <laughs> I was a guest, maybe it had to have been a year or two ago, at a really small con because with the Cabbage Merchant, I did not expect anyone to even know who I was, and it mm -hmm. picked up like wildfire, and I was like, wow, that's nuts, and I ended up with a small guest spot, and I had like pictures, I had prints made and everything, and nobody bought any, and I was like, wait, why do I have prints? Nobody wants a picture of me with a cabbage. They want the girl. So then you started selling <laughs> the cabbages. I remember that. Exactly, exactly. You got, you got to roll with it. Um, what is, what was the most difficult cosplay to build? I assume it was the bug. Cause dude, um, you're a Starship Trooper bug. Like <laughs> it, you that made that. That was pretty straightforward as far as design. Sure. Uh, but as far as wearing it, uh, it took four handlers plus like wow. I ended up with six people, but I, I need at least four 
just to get through a convention because, it, again, it is 12 feet by four and a half feet. Uh, and that kind of spread getting through a con, a, a big con, sure. you got to have somebody watch each leg. And then even when I'm stationed, you got to have somebody stand by those legs because you don't want somebody coming by and tripping over them and, and breaking them or, or breaking themselves or whatever. Sure. Um, so, yeah, I always needed four people on that one. Uh, the, the purpose for that one actually was um, there is a museum in Seattle called the EMP, um, and it's right at the base of the, uh, the needle. Mm -hmm. And... Um, Half of it is a, muse a, a music museum that has to do with, like, everything from, like, Jimi Hendrix, The Beatles, and stuff like that. But the other half has, like, um, movie stuff. And they have, like, a horror oh, wow. section and a fantasy section that has, like, original costumes from the Labyrinth and, and like, Lord of the Rings and, and um, Princess Bride and stuff like that. But uh, what they were opening up was a new science fiction exhibit. And uh, they had uh, original set pieces like the captain's chair from star trek and 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 stuff from back to the future sure. um but they also had uh, a couple items from starship troopers and um the person in charge of the social media there had worked with me prior because they had a fantasy ball um with uh for their fantasy section where they had like a kind of a a, a, a Jairus labyrinth kind of ball thing. Oh, cool. And I had done the Skeksis and I've done Hoggle and stuff like that. So I've been in contact with her uh, for a paid appearance that way. Um, but for the science fiction thing, they were having a, a grand opening for the um, exhibit and they were having George Takai come and cut the ribbon for the opening ceremonies for all the – uh, VIP people, which are the pay people that pay their yearly memberships or donate to the to the uh, right. museum, so it wasn't public uh, thing, which they opened up to later uh, after the ceremony. But um, th she asked me to do this. Uh, they had Starship Troopers, which is, has been one of my favorites, sure. um, and I thought it was a challenge. And so uh, the bug was actually made for that, and we were able wow. to hold the rib for George, and it was a lot of fun. Um, it was also the same weekend as Comic Con, so it kind of worked out that sure. we were getting paid to do this, and <laughs> all of a sudden, ta -da, we're already here and stuff like that. Right. Um, so, uh, as far as difficulty, yeah, like it was straightforward. I mean, there's a little bit of mechanics to to figure out, sure. um, but it, it wasn't that bad. I, I think this last one is the the most challenging one, as they all are. Like with each costumes gets incredibly, increasingly uh, different, sure. uh, difficult. Um, whether it be more of what techniques I'm doing, what type of materials, how big it is, um, the, the wow factor I kind of try to turn up each time. Sure. Um, but more often, more with this one was the uh, the mechanics of how to puppet it and how to uh, blur the human and creature forms. And so when when I'm wearing it and I'm puppeting it, you can't tell where I'm at at anything. As sure. well as the hardest part on this one is the um, modulization of it. Like I learned in my first cosplay, you gotta learn how to take these things apart and put them into storage, otherwise you're gonna stand and stare at these ah, things for the whole thing. Smart. So this crab, um, he's huge. Yeah. Um, if you've ever seen a jumbo roll of Warbla, there's 10 of those in this costume alone. Good and Lord. so um, learning how to break that down and to fit that into a car or fit that onto a plane um, and wear that and then figure out the weight distribution. I, I, I mean, the, the guys that wore these things inside in the original movie um, could only last for about 15 minutes at a time until they had to be hang, hung up on racks. Because sure. they were so easy, difficult to get in and out of that they didn't even have time to get in and out of them. We, they just hung the whole character and actor up on a, on a, on a big rack to give them a rest. Wow. Um, and I didn't do this to, to wear this for several hours at a time at a, at a busy convention. Uh, without being able to take breaks, to stand perfectly still and pose for pictures. Uh, I mean, you've been to cons. You know, when you when you stop for a picture, you're stuck there for <laughs> you a get a long crowd. time. Yeah, yeah. And then, as well as, how do I get dressed in this thing, um, and then get onto a convention floor, get through doors and, and stuff like that, and and how do I get it there? Um, so I think that was the hardest part of that costume was the sure. whole mechanical thing. Um, usually, when I make a costume. I've already made that costume at least a hundred times in my head until I actually physically have it. So it's like losing sleep and using that creative mind to like, okay, well this part is going to go onto this part. How will that work if I do it this way? Or how will that work if I do it this way? Uh, what, 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 
what challenge was, what materials, what budget do I have to work with? Sure. Uh, and stuff like that. So, yeah, I think with each costume, they get increasingly more difficult. Uh, but definitely, uh, as a mechanics standpoint, uh, this last one was probably the hardest to work with. That is nuts. Just looking at it, like, I remember when you first debuted it with the pictures, I was like, he's he's in that. He's in, Yeah. The eyes light up. It, it The way that it moves is phenomenal. Like, it is it is wondrous. <laughs> like, it's a lot of fun. And that's one of, like I said, is a passionate creature of mine. Like I'd watch these movies and, and I, I did the sketches obviously, cause that was my, my favorite, but, sure. uh, but watching these characters, these Garthrums on screen are like, that's such a cool design. I mean, it's so cool that like fallout stole the design. Yeah, right. and they're like, <laughs> It's whatever true. they're Miralex or whatever they're called, um, which I get confused for often. It's sure. like, oh, that's that Fallout thing. I'm just like, no, actually, it's a Dark Crystal. Yeah. <laughs> Fallout 30 years later. Right. But, uh, yeah, it was so cool the design that everyone's stealing the design. And Skeksis, too. I think the, uh, the Skeksis was, design was stolen there. And there's little creatures in WoW that walk around that yeah. look exactly like the, the armor and Skeksis. So that movie alone inspired not just me and everyone around, but like a whole bunch of people, including that are in the gaming industry, were inspired by the by these creatures. And, and they're, they're paying homage to them in some way, shape, or form. Yeah, absolutely. Um, on that note, do you have... Do you have a dream cosplay, like one day when I figured out I want to do this, or do you just kind of roll with it and like wait for something to hit? So I have a list that I call cosplay to come. So okay. I, I put some on ideas on some for fun, some for backup, sure. some just because it was a funny idea that came in my head that I'll never do. Um, <laughs> but usually, if I have something that I want to do, I'll do it. Right on. It just might be a, a, a the, the matter of time until I get to it. However with that question there always is one cosplay that is my dream cosplay because of the character i absolutely love i i, I love the film uh it takes me back to my childhood however there's no way in hell that i'll ever make it <laughs> and that is uh TikTok from return to oz uh, i yes. love this character so much uh, but doing research on this watching um first of all this guy was a professional acrobat he was meant to bend in ways that you're not supposed to um would go into a little ball and he would be like totally bent over and would walk, have to walk backwards for the creature to work. And the whole top wow. half, he wasn't even a part of. And if you just look up cre uh, pictures of the behind the scenes of that, seeing this guy strapped down into and folded over on himself, there's no way in hell that I'd be able to do that <laughs> sure. in my shape. Um, not only that, but he would have people get him out there every five minutes or whatever. He'd be on scene and then whatever. Um, yeah, that would be it. Now, I have seen somebody uh, do it. Uh, they've had to increase the size of this uh, character by at least three or four times, so it was like super huge, so they can actually fit into it and not be so condensed. So, I mean, it is technically possible, but I do things really accurate, and I, sure. I like to keep things perfect. And and I have made some smaller creatures larger just to just to have them fit, but. I don't think that that's one that I would want to tackle because yeah. I would be, want that to be so accurate. Um, and then it'd probably go as crazy as I need this to be made out of copper and so on and so forth. Um, sure. But yeah, that would be my dream cosplay is TikTok. Um, but it won't ever happen. Right. You're like, I just don't, I don't physically bend that way. Yeah. <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. Um, so you go, you go to a lot of conventions. Do you have a favorite? You have like this one, like for uh, emotional reason, for way it's run, like. Well, I think there's several different kinds of conventions versus pop culture and anime and comic and whatever, sure. Renaissance, steampunk. Um, but aside from the genres, um, there's also the um, trade show, which is like the big open floor where all the the large companies come. <laughs> for instance, San Diego Comic Con. Mm -hmm. San Diego Comic Con is, is is a trade show. Um, but and and there's a lot of companies, uh, whether they be film or TV or toy or comic or whatever it is, they're all there peddling their goods and 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 advertising and stuff like that. And that, as far as trade shows, San Diego, you can't beat. Sure. Um, New, York, New York Comic Con's a little close behind, but um, probably bigger numbers actually too. But San Diego, um, by far, is probably one of my favorites. Um, I don't like the heat, but other than that, it's an amazing con, and it, it pours out onto blocks and blocks outside the convention center are all shut down, and they have things going on from the different studios, like Adult Swim will have a whole city block 
done with a whole big carnival and adult swim kind of cartoon uh themed and they have the showings at night with a picnic under the stars and stuff like that like these things are like all common in there and then they have the industry parties um where you get to go and and, and hang out with people um that work in the industry like uh adam savage that was the, the tested party that one that first year that i went right. um and stuff like that so that in all of its experience as a trade show is by far my favorite as far as that sure. now there's also hotel conventions where um they're smaller um they're more geared towards the fandoms uh and then they are as the industry um they have an artist alley they might have a little bit of a vendor hall sure. um but it's mostly around the artists and they're all local and these are my prints or my stuffies and my plushies or whatever they they sell or keychains and stuff like that um and then you have all the panels and the panels are completely different from uh watching Stan Lee and, and uh, his Marvel team do a panel on, on what's coming out next in the movies and, and showing you pre, uh, previews of the trailers and stuff like that sure. um, to where you go to panels at these things and there's like, hey, um, we all love Steven Universe and we're going to be up on here as the characters and you're going to talk to the panel like that or being able to work with the artists like myself and, and have workshops to where hey, you've never touched Warwell before, come to my workshop, I'll show you how to work with the, the, the product and we'll make something here while we're doing it or we'll work with LEDs and stuff like that, different types sure. of things. Uh, but as well, on top of all that, it's you're all trapped in this hotel for the whole weekend. So at 7 o'clock when the panels and stuff stop, the party starts. So they have a whole hallway dedicated to um, – drinking and so like each room will have all the furniture removed and they'll each have their own theme so like there's a doctor who bar and there's a star trek bar and there's a steampunk bar and you just spend the whole night going from bar to bar sure. and, and meeting people and, and and then they have the raves that go on at night and stuff like that and right. it's like a whole halloween party for an entire weekend and it's completely different experience um from these trade shows and the trade shows i go because i love the atmosphere and i, I love the 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 buzz and stuff like that. But I go to these hotel conventions because I get to see friends there every year right. that I don't get to see elsewhere. So I'll travel to, uh, to one of these things and I'm like, Hey, we, we hung out last year and stuff like that. And, and we're like the best of friends for that weekend. Yeah. <laughs> and then we might talk to each other online for a little bit, but we don't really get to hang out again until that next year. So it's kind of like a big slumber party kind of thing. And it's, those are a totally different atmosphere than the trade shows. So um, as far as that, um, there's actually like several of them. And those I base mo mostly on the people that are there. Sure. Um, like this last weekend was a smaller con, and I got to see people that I haven't seen in a year um, mm -hmm. out in this city uh, in the middle of Washington. Um, and so those are my favorites for the community versus the whole cosplay Comic-Con kind of thing. Sure, sure. Um you have a look that people know with the hoodie. Yeah. Where did that come from? Because it, okay. it's 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 so perfect. It's so simple, but it also is so recognizable. Like, I can be like, oh, it's a Ryan Wells cosplay, which yeah. is a thing. <laughs> yeah, I'm actually on a cartoon now too. Yeah, um, oh yeah, we're, we're getting there next. <laughs> <laughs> so um, that it was started off as a as a joke. Uh, I had that outfit on years and years before I ever thought about cosplaying. Um, and a friend of mine who uh, goes to the Portland Art Institute uh, drew a picture from that picture, and oh, I had sure. it as my profile picture. And I never changed my profile picture. Um, right. And my Facebook before cosplay was just a handful of people that I knew. Um, I was never as extroverted as I am now. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think t technically I'm still an introvert. Um, I just have to play an extrovert, um, especially that. in this profession and going to panels and talking uh, to a, a full room at, at PAX Prime or whatever it might be that you got like thousands of people and then becoming popular enough to where people now know who you are um, and, and having people that you don't know come up to you at a con and start talking to you about things and, and just having to put myself out there, that's changed. Uh, but going back to that, I had this character. I've been to a couple cons. Uh, I usually hang around with uh, people that I... I, I and make friends and then sometimes those friends are, are vendors or artists or whatever sure. um, because I mean I'm walking around in cosplay and I stop by booths to look at people's stuff and I end up having conversations and then we end up becoming friends and stuff like that uh, and so I've had a couple of friends that were artists and uh, I like to support people um, when I go to these cons uh, the artists that are coming there they're spending their hard-earned money to make money um, 
and as well as I support my cosplay friends, but I also want to support my artist friends. And so I would say, hey, I, I want to commission a piece from you. I just do a profile picture or whatever. And I had that one. I'm just like, and I don't remember whose idea if I, we had asked for it or if they just decided to do it, but they did it off of the same picture in their own style. And then like, it just kept going that different artist friends would draw me in that same outfit in their own style. And that kind of became a running joke, like kind of like the gorillas, you know, how they yeah. hide behind that cartoon. That was kind of my, I'm going to hide behind a cartoon thing. Yeah. Um, and so that's how it was. Is it's like, you can draw me in any style you want. I just want that outfit on. And then, um, at a convention two years ago, some friends of mine um, were also attending, and uh, they were going to heckle me at a panel dressed as me because I started dressing <laughs> as a character. And the reason I started doing that is because I wanted to talk about my fandoms outside of cosplay. Because when I'm in mm -hmm. cosplay, no one can hear me or see me or anything because I'm completely covered. Sure. So I started wearing T-shirts while I was outside of a costume. So like when I took off my, my Skeksis, I had a Dark Crystal T-shirt. And I'd walk around oh. hoping someone would say, hey, did you see the Skeksis? <laughs> and I'd be like, oh, yeah, it was me. And we start talking about it. Right. Uh, but no one caught on to the T-shirts. I had a T-shirt that said, <laughs> ack, 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 all over it because I did the Mars Attacks. No one caught on to that. So I started wearing pieces from my cosplay. Like I wore my Hoggle costume and then I would walk around with the Hoggle's vest on later. Oh, right. Still nobody caught on to it. So I'm just like, <laughs> how do I differentiate myself out of character as somebody that you can still approach? And so I started wearing my outfit. And then, like I said, uh, some friends of mine showed up at a panel to heckle me, and they were uh, this husband-wife couple were both wearing my hoodie, teal, or turquoise. Turquoise, purple, and black hat. Yep. And they were wearing that, and I took a picture with them. And from then, other people started wearing it and taking pictures of me or sending pictures in of things that they were, of people that they were finding in public. And it just became a joke from that. And then, obviously, the artists that were all drawing different fan art and stuff like that was all on that sure. now how it led into the tv show now you're a cartoon um, <laughs> yeah um there's a, a show that uh is on hulu um called forget about it it's a, it's a mob family that's relocated to canada mm -hmm. it's kind of like american dad but a lot raunchier <laughs> um, but they were doing a comic-con episode and a friend of mine who uh works for the show um I had done uh, uh, an original cosplay where I turned Chitty Chitty Bang Bang into a Transformer. And they were doing a Comic-Con episode, and they couldn't use any trademarked character or anybody that was registered uh, within the Comic-Con. So they're just like, hey, can we use your Chitty Chitty Bang Bang? Because it's not registered. Sure. I said, absolutely, that'd be fun. Uh, and so they went off and um, came back and said, uh, well, legal team won't allow us to do that, but I'm going to put you <laughs> in your hoodie because they knew about the joke as well. Uh, and so I said, okay. And that was like probably a good five months before a friend of mine actually sent me a picture of me on the screen saying, oh, my God, you're on this cartoon. And I was like, oh, I knew about that like five months ago. I totally forgot that was happening. <laughs> it took so long. Um, and then I went back to him and was like, oh, thank you. That was a really cool thing to, to find. He's just like, well, actually, you're in four more episodes and sent me like screenshots for me to have to go watch <laughs> and try to find him. Uh, but, yeah, that all started off putting me as a background character all because they wanted to use – uh, one of my costumes in their, at their Comic-Con, which unfortunately they couldn't use. So they uh, used me talking to a guy in a generic cardboard robot costume instead uh, of my Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. Which, that, so that's, that. that's a design marvel itself on that. that you made a Chitty Chitty <laughs> Bang Bang Transformer. <laughs> yeah. That's incredible. Well, that's it. it goes back to that emotional attachment. Like, I love that car growing up. Right. Uh, as I do a lot of the movie cars. Uh, but... Chitty Chitty Bang Bang kind of transformed, so it wasn't too far of a stretch. Right. Uh, and then this is, and then you have Michael Bay destroying Transformers and stuff like that. And so, <laughs> um, I was I was being asked to do a lot of steampunk conventions as well, which is not something that is in my wheelhouse. Sure. So it, that was kind of like, okay, I can do something cool, original, and kind of steampunk. Um, and so I did that. Sure. Uh, what what are uh, what are your fandoms? Obviously, Back to the Future is a big one for you. Yeah. Well, what... I, I, not so much anymore. Oh, okay. <laughs> I kind of outdid that one. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> You're like I have a DeLorean that one for now. For so. thirty years at least, uh, I was obsessed with like even in high school. Um, I had wires all over my car. My plate said "out of T9" because I couldn't fit a, out of time on them, <laughs> um, and I had little pieces that I had made um, to make the inside of my car. Uh, looked like the the uh, DeLorean, and this is long, long time ago. 
in, in high school, I was that big of a geek. I would make <laughs> videos in the garage. It was all black, and I'd have like a little cardboard cutout of the flux capacitor with a light behind it, and I'd shake the camera and put some warm water on it like it was flying <laughs> through the air. That's awesome. Yeah, I was, I, I was really obsessed with that. That's um, so great. But I never dressed up from it. Um, I'm not a body shape that fits any of those characters. Sure. Um, so I never had gone in costume as far as that. Um, but I had made fake hoverboards and, and other stuff like that and as a kid. Um, but yeah, I was obsessed with that one since I was like 14. Sure. And uh, now you have a uh, So that's a fandom. Um, other than that, I, I think I'm more inspired by like Jim Henson's like all his creatures. Sure. I mean, like I like Muppets and I like Dark Crystal and I like Labyrinth, uh, but I don't really have favorites. Sure. Um, I just like the whole, um, the whole fantasy the whole of it shop. all. Yeah. yeah, I like Del Toro for his fantasies. I, I'm not particularly fond of Hellboy versus uh, Pan's Labyrinth or, or any of his other films, but I just like him in general, like the way he does things, like Pacific Rim. And I did a Pacific Rim costume as well too. Um, and then uh, the other one, obviously, is Tim Burton. Um, the way he sees the world is just so fun. Like I just went and saw his his last film that came out, um, and it wasn't styled as much um, as as some of his other stuff, uh, some of his other work. Sure. But you can st- certainly see nuances of, of his world, like with the whole suburbs versus fantasy, and and like how everything's very sterile and 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 multiplied and and duplicated, and and it, that kind of like those nods and the way he sees things are just hilarious to me. And I, I find myself when I go to a theater to watch these movies, like I'm the only guy laughing at things because <laughs> like, I get it. And sure. nobody else, everyone's watching and it just flies over their head. And I'm like, Oh, this is hilarious. The way like he represents like this and whatever. And, but yeah, just the way he sees the world is just so fantastical that like, I, I hope that one day that I, I can get my outlook out there to where I'm creative enough to just completely separate myself from reality and just view the way the world look that he does. Cause like, I love his vision. Sure. But yeah, yeah. I, fandoms as far as that, I, no, not really. Um, I, I mean, I definitely, um, pick characters from different movies that have inspired me. Uh, mm-hmm. but again, by the time I've made that costume, it's been in my head a hundred times. And, um, I, to be honest with you, I'm sick of a cosplay before I even put it on. <laughs> like, like, I have all these things, and I'm doing it, and everybody's, like, cheering me on, and they're all getting excited. And then, of course, they got to tag me in every T-shirt and toy and news article <laughs> that has to do with this thing. I'm just like, I've seen it, I've seen it, I promise you. Right. Um, but, yeah, by the time I get it to a convention, I'm just, like, kind of over it. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. I hear you. I just finished a clone trooper for the 501st, and those, okay. come, those come as kits. Like, I'm not vac-forming yeah. ABS, you know. Um but by the end of it, I was like, I know what the inside of it looks like, and I hate it, and it's uncomfortable, and it's like, I look cool, but you don't know how many times I burn my hand. <laughs> uh, but yeah, who are um, who are some of your favorite cosplayers? People that are in the community, or uh, or like you said, you have inspirations, you know, Jim Henson, Tim Burton, stuff like that. Do you have any other people that you really, really look up to in any regard? Um. I mean, I have a lot of talented friends, and to narrow that list down, it is near impossible. Sure. Um, but, I mean, uh, there, there's definitely friends that I've learned from mm-hmm. um, that uh, from the beginning uh, and, and still to this day uh, that, I, that I work with at conventions or I see online or whatever. Um, everybody has their own thing that I, I admire for some reason or another. Um, I'm not one who say, oh, I idolize this cosplayer, put them up on a pedestal because sure. they're the heroes of cosplay or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I, I don't think that anybody I, – I don't think wearing a costume is, is celebrity worthy. Right, um, okay. And, and that and, – and when people come and say, oh, you do great work, and I say thank you, and then they continue to, to grovel, it's like it's not necessary. We're all just wearing Halloween costumes, whether we've made them uh, and spent – hours from on them or whether we're just purely in cosplay just to celebrate the fandom and we got it from party city like um yeah i I, like i admire and respect all my friends sure uh, but i can't say this friend is more better at their job than this friend kind of thing um but are some people that do it as a profession 
to where I learn from stuff from. Um, yeah, that's a hard question for me. Like, it's, it's very. I, I it's guess very technically I could become friends with Tim Burton and then put him on that list, but yeah. <laughs> um, I, I kind of keep those. Like, even when I've met people that have worked in the film, um, as cosplayers, we're just copying their work. Sure. Like, we're we're creative in our own sense, uh, but we're not the dreamers, really. Good point. Um, Good even point. when I do an original cosplay like Chitty, I, I didn't dream that up. I just took a car that existed and figured out how to fit that onto a mannequin sure. uh, and make it a costume. Uh, but the, the visionaries that come up with these ideas and stuff like that, um, those are the ones that truly inspire me versus uh, friends that are having fun doing this and figure out how to, to make those visions realities kind of thing and sure. take them off the film. Um, that's inspiring and, and uh, definitely respect worthy, but um, not something that I kind of idolize. I don't sure. know. I don't know. That's no, weird. That's a... Maybe it's kind of we're spoiled because we're constantly surrounded by it. Sure. That it's kind of just become a norm to be friends and, and to work with these people and then stuff. Um, I certainly find cosplayers around the world and stuff like that, that I don't know. And I'll find uh, a photo uh, whether the photographer did some really amazing stuff to the photo or the, the cosplayer had some really cool effects or, or some groundbreaking um, material that I'd never seen or technique that I'd never seen um, or application or whatever it might be. I'm like, oh, I really want to get to know this person, and I will do that. And that's part of the networking sure. is, hey, I saw this photo and blah, blah, blah. And I mean, you go to a convention, you ask any cosplayer how they made a costume, and you're stuck there for a half hour listening yeah. to the explanation <laughs> of it. And that's how we learn. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, uh, so I, I guess I've, I've never looked up to any of them. I've kind of just so seen everybody as my equal kind of thing. Sure, I I love that answer. <laughs> that, that was the perfect answer to that because that is okay. It so is very a long one. I talk a lot. <laughs> no, dude, I'm right there with you. And they, right. these are some of the questions I got sent in. But no, that is a great, great perspective to have. Um, so you have a lot of research that you do when you go into costumes. What are some th places you would recommend people to go to to learn like is there any specific uh, as, as far as learning materials or like or the materials characters kind techniques of? um like if you're like all right if you want to better your cosplay regardless of what it is i would check out uh like for an example uh you know build a ran punish props will teach you foam work and mm -hmm. stuff like that do you have any resources you'd like to share yeah with bill's you? got some great books that he uh, put out uh on on not only uh building it uh Ted Evil Ted Smith is another great foam builder oh, yeah. that has a lot of tutorials uh, on YouTube. Uh, but I mean, if if you find a project that you want to do, you basically got to break it down to what you want to work with. And something that people ask me a lot is, what what do you use to make this? And the answer is, there's a hundred answers mm -hmm. to it, and they're all right. It all just depends on on your budget, your time, your experience, and so on and so forth, and what you feel comfortable working with. And when you decide to do that. Then just go online and just type in those keywords in, in Google or in YouTube uh, or go to the library. And, and now that we have all these people that are putting all these um, tutorials and books out, uh, Svetlana is another one that does a lot with uh, Warbler, um, Kiyoki cosplay or something like that. Okay. I'm not too sure. She's from Germany, but we just worked together at uh, on a panel at uh, Salt Lake City. Um, and then uh, go out and read these books and do this stuff and talk to other cosplayers. Like, as a new cosplayer, I can understand this might be a challenge, but as somebody who's been doing cosplay for a while, I guarantee you got a, a big handful of people that have already worked with this. So, so talking to other people, um, friending cosplayers online and talking to them, answering them questions on there. Um, it, there's so much knowledge out there um, for you to just say, well, I don't know how to do this and give up. Well, sure. then maybe it's not really a hobby for you. For sure. Uh, for but sure. you really want to do the work and go out there and, and meet people and, and research and network and, and, and just see what's available. There's tons of things. Like, there's no tutorial when I made my Skeksis. I didn't know anybody. Um, and, and there was no tutorial on how to put together a Skeksis costume. Um, but I watched the behind the scenes and I saw the, the creating the, the, the bone structure for how they work. I got a little action figure and I kind of took it apart to see how things, my action figure was about six to seven inches tall. So I knew for every inch on this action figure, it was going to be a foot in real life. And so that's how I scaled it up to make yeah. the backpack and the arms as long as they needed to be in the tail and stuff like that. Um, it, it was a, a, a 
I wasn't really good at sewing back then, but it was all rags. And so I started something where it didn't matter if I messed up with the sewing machine, it would look fine on this thing. Um, I watched a lot of tutorials on zombie appliances on how they make the, the eyes sunken and the cheekbones and the rotting flesh and the wrinkles and stuff like that by using toilet paper and cotton balls and latex. And I figured that if I can make a skull for this thing, that I can apply that some makeup techniques onto this skull and make this creature instead of making a cast and a mold and, and a sculpt and all this stuff like that in a shop that I don't have. Because, like, what you're looking at here right. is pretty much my apartment. Right. <laughs> my bed's over there and my kitchen's right there, but that's about it. So, and the toilet that way. Beautiful. But, um, <laughs> But I don't have the ability to go in a three-foot, uh, three-mile warehouse to make a clay sculpt and then make a a, a, a negative um, cast of it and then do a slush cast. And I I have to find other ways to rebuild that. Um, and so by watching videos on that, and then I wanted to put hair on it. So I was watching a lot of videos on how to paint Halloween masks and how to put hair on them and to punch the hair, or there's other techniques to do that. Um, I, Baymax was another one I did. I wanted this carbon fiber look to him. Um, and I found a tutorial on some guy who's customizing their motorbike to have a carbon fiber paint effect by using shelf paper and stuff like that. So like Ooh. taking these different elements and just like, okay, this, this applies to what I want to do. So searching through, um, online with your keywords, um, that you are looking for, um, to get different things. But yeah, just talking to tons of people, like you said, um, the RPF is a great resource. Yeah. Posting your progress pictures on there. You might learn something new that you ha like, you already have a, a mindset of what you want to do and you start doing that process. And then throughout that process, somebody chimes in and says, oh, I've also already done this custom. Try this out. And then your path completely veers off the other way because now you have a new technique that has been proven. Sure. Um, or uh, you might learn about a new material. Like when I first started, I didn't even know what EVA foam was. Um, and I, I'm just like, oh, I want to do a Mondoshanen from the fifth element, one of the big giant oh, nine yeah. foot gold guys. <laughs> uh, and I'm like, I, I learned about this great new material, EVA, and I'm gonna make it out of EVA. So I bought stacks and stacks of it, and I bought a little model. And I'm just like, you know what, I'm gonna try this out first. And so I made uh, one of the backpacks from the Pacific Rim of the the well work, the wall the wall workers. Yeah. And uh, from that project, I said, there's no way in hell that this would ever work as a Mondoshanen. <laughs> I'm gonna have to wait till I can do resin or whatever on that, and I scrapped that project for now. But I learned how to use EVA foam, and then I was able to do other things, um, and I learned the limitations um, from it. Sure. Uh, and so it's just trial and error. Um, and research. Bob Ross has happy accidents, and then yeah. Pablo Picasso <laughs> says something about um, you never know what you can do until you do it kind of thing. Sure. So, yeah, I mean, just trial and error is something that we all have to learn from, um, but you can also learn from other people's experience and their trial and error as well. Absolutely. That is awesome. Well, I have taken up a significant amount of your time. <laughs> I'm, I'm I, good. I, uh, You're going to have a lot of editing. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I cannot tell you how much I appreciate it. Um, no problem. Where can people find you online if they want to follow you? Cosplay of Ryan Wells on Facebook. Uh, I have an Instagram, but I hardly use it. Right. So that's the main thing. I mean, if you want to follow along in my work or see any pictures from past work that we've talked about mm -hmm. or, or just ask me questions or and, and network, uh, that's, that's where to do it. Sweet. Awesome, man. Well, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate yeah. it. This um, is going to be great. <laughs> Cool. Well, you'll have to let me know how it turns out. I definitely can't wait to hear it. Absolutely. Very cool. And...